Man, got around. OT7 back here. And today, guys, I want to tell you a story, a true story from my life over here at Patreon at the pimping level, bro. We keep it real, we keep it raw, because I think the best example of pimping is to see it in, in action. So, <clears throat> I wanted to tell you guys yesterday, I did another movie. It's a science fiction zombie horror genre, like gore type movie with the the famous director Joe Lujan who has hundreds and hundreds of, of movies out already bro if you're in the horror and uh gore so anyway man he hits me up man and I went over there and I did a I did a movie so let me just share let me just walk, let me piggyback it for you so we did a this place called the haunted house here in Vegas it's a famous haunted house place like it's famous because it's, 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 it's way out the way it's laid out. It's very scary. So he's like, hey, man, meet in the back. So I get there. It's about 10 in the morning, bro. So I get there yesterday, dude, and I see them walking around in costume. And I wave to Joe and his ex executive assistant. His name is Chris. Um, Joe's name is Joe Lujan. The other dude's name is Chris Ivan. Yeah, Chris Ivan. So I go, hey, OG, what's up, man? Come around the back. So anyway... Here in Vegas, dude, there's a lot of strippers, a lot of showgirls, a lot of exotic dancers, a lot of escorts, anything to do with the sex trade. There's a lot of beautiful women. So there, therefore, a lot of beautiful women fall into the category of actresses and singers and dancers and models and, and video girls. So just follow me, guys. So uh, I do this talk show. It's called Vegas Views, where I interview upcoming talent and a lot of the talent. I've been in Vegas for a year now doing... Uh, I started, I started doing movies back in October of 2021, so thus far I've done 15 different movies, bro. And I got seven more I'm going to do before I move to a foreign country. And I'm just sharing this with you because I have a very distinguishable look. And it's not just my look, I have a very specific skill set. I want to talk to you guys over here at Pimpology. Because, dude, you got to understand something, guys. This is the one thing that you got to understand, dude. There's a thing called a sexual market value, bro. It's just the way it is. I didn't invent it. Don't kill the messenger. You're over here at the Pimpology tier because you want to hear the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you, whatever you believe in. So there's a sexual market value, bro. And it's just based on LMS, which means look, money, status, right? And it's not in any particular order, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap my I'm gonna wrap I'm gonna wrap your head around what I believe the order is based on my life of being a young pretty dude to becoming a savage warrior barbarian of a man to becoming a distinguished older gentleman. I'm gonna share with you the different evolutions. So follow me. So I go on set, man. I go back to wardrobe because they, you know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be this uh, this evolved you know, this evolved super duper zombie dude. They call him the shredder because he just rips people open. He just eats them and he just shreds them. Like a normal zombie, when they eat you, they just blum, 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 blum. A shredder is just a violent motherfucker. He just fucking rips you apart and shreds you, right? So anyway, I go to wardrobe. There's this lady there that I've done, um, I don't know, two or three other movies with. She's the wardrobe lady. She's an actress as well, but she's multifaceted because she does wardrobe, makeup, she can act, she can sing, she can dance, and she does stunts. So anyway, she's like, hey, OG, how's it going? So there's a couple of hot other ladies, like, let's just call them the 10, the dime pieces. But then, you know, they got these, these, these people called background, and it's just like, your background, you're not a featured actor, you know, you're not like, I wasn't the star, but I'm like, I'm a top... Um, contributor in the film because I'm the monster fighting the two movies. I'm fighting the, the stars of the show, so that's pretty good. If you, just so you know, in movie terms. So you know, the star of the show is this tall, pretty white dude, man. His real name is Brian, but you know, I don't know his last name. But he's a real handsome, tall dude. But he's pretty rugged. Like he's a, he's a handsome dude where he you know he trains in MMA. And he does bodybuilding, and he works out, you know, so he, he fights, you know. But he's a he's won a genetic lottery. He's tall and he's handsome. So let's just call him a pretty boy. And then they got a shorter white dude. So this dude, the, 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 the star of the show, he, let's just say, for lack of a better word, he's like 6'4", tall white dude. Let's just say he's about 
you know, let's give him like 220, just a lean, ripped white dude. But then the co-star is a shorter white dude. Let's just say he's six foot and he's about, you know, 200 pounds, you know, but he, he doesn't have the long flowing hair of the star, but he's a ball headed dude, but he's pretty, he's pretty rugged. Let's just call him the, let's just call him the handsome dude, right? So then they got other white dudes in there, various shapes and sizes, savages like me, you know what I mean? But then they got the tens, right? So the tens is like, they range from being the, you know, one of the main feature girls with the the head dude to some other beautiful girls that run and that get saved from by the head dude from the zombies, right? But then they got like some, let's say some sixes and some, you know, some, let's just say they got some like sevens, sixes, and fives. So they're a combination of background cast, some of them turn into zombies or whatever. So just follow me, guys. So I walk on set, you know, and I just came, I just came from my uh, <laughs> my prehab appointment. I had this on. Look, guys. So you, if you if you guys ever notice, man, I wear a lot of martial arts gear, and here's there's three reasons why. And I'm gonna be transparent because we're over here at Pimpology, and I'm giving you the game, dude. I'm giving you the game that if you can sit back and take it for what it is, coming from an OG, 61 year old dude, bro. I didn't done it all, and I'm gonna tell you over here at Pimpology, bro. My numbers, man, is in the, well, let's just see. A single digit is like one, double digit is like 10, triple digits is like 100. So my numbers is like in the quadruple digits. Now, you can take that however you want to take it. But you over, obviously over here at Pimpology, you want to learn from real pimp. I'm going to tell you how I pimp. So anyway, so uh, I get there, man, and, uh, you know, they got the sixes and the and the and the the sevens, the sixes and the fives. You know what I mean? So here's I'm a, I'm a quarterback for you. So I walk in. I got this on, guys. Look, let me just show you what I got on. Let me show you. So I come in there, right? You know what I'm saying? And check this out, guys. Look, check it out. I don't know if you can see. I don't know if the sparkle shines, man. But check this out. So I walk in, right? And they go, oh, OG. We glad you're here, man. Like, oh man, we got a surprise for you, man. Cause uh, we was we was shooting this. They shot this movie for a week, and they was shooting the final the final climax. And they was like, oh man, cause the 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 the, the director is a creative director. Like, he's he's a producer, director, and a writer. Like, this dude's awesome, bro. He, look him up, Joe Luhan. He's got a lot of shit on Amazon, bro. Just on the internet. So he's like, yeah, we was thinking about you, man. It would be a fantastic scene. You just evolve zombie and you fight the head dudes and they've been slaying zombies all through the fucking complex. And you come up just a savage thing, right? So he's like happy to see me and everything. So then he sends me over to wardrobe. So when I walk in, the wardrobe lady's name is Tatum. She's pretty hot. I'm going to give her a seven. But, you know, she's more of an intellectual. But then as I walk by, I see the head. I mean, I see the, the main actor. No offense, bro. I mean, uh, this is over at Patreon, so I'm going to be honest. But. And I'm not being racial, but a lot of white dudes that hit the genetic lottery and they do martial, they do MMA, like mixed martial arts, cage fighting for real, and they do some bodybuilding and they're pretty fit. They got this air of arrogance about them, like, yeah, I'm the star show, I'm I'm handsome, I can fight, motherfucker. They like they like Andrew Tate. Let's let's put him in. Yeah, that's a good example for here. He's there in the Andrew Tate realm, except this dude's not bald. He got dark hair, dark mustache, well groomed. You know, he's, he's a, he's a nice-looking dude. He's a, he's a very pretty man, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, his co-star, the, the shorter white dude, he's a handsome dude too, but he's got a bald head. Like, I can see he's got scars on his head. I don't know if he's a former Aryan brother or KKK or Hell's Angels, but this dude's been through some savage battles. He reminds me of the dude, yeah, if you see the movie called Troy, the opening scene where Brad Pitt fights the big bald dude, from the other army. Yeah, he's like that dude. So anyway, the the hot girls were all like around them. They're on break from shooting the set. You know, the handsome dudes just got the girls there. There's some other like masculine dudes, but they're more like rugged, right? They got long flowing hair as well. White boys, blonde hair with muscles, but they don't have, you know, the, the face isn't as aesthetically pleasing. So just follow me. So I walked through and everything. And then uh, the 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 sevens and the sixes and the fives, dude. Like, let me share something with you over here, Patreon Pimpology. I want to share with you. And the reason that I wear this gear 
is for three reasons. Number one, dude, I am a martial artist, dude. Like, this is what I do. Like, and all my free, this is why, let me be honest with you. This is why I retired from IT. Because, dude, <laughs> in IT, I had to read all these technical manuals and take all these courses, bro, and go to all these conferences with geeky dudes. Nothing against geeky dudes. And but dude, sometimes I'd be so tired at the end of the day. I was only getting my martial arts, my martial arts, and if I was lucky, three times a week, like every other day, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if I wasn't lucky, at least one day a week, I would go on Saturdays because my head sensei would open up the dojo just for me. Because what I did, guys, and this one I'm gonna share with you in pimpology, you have to offer value to high, other high status men. So that's why I, I encourage you to find your archetype. And what I can help you with over here is the archetype of being a cage fighter. Because then, bro, what you can offer rich dudes and and famous dudes and dudes with high social, you know, social media status, you can offer them the ability to learn to become a warrior because it, every man inside wants to be a warrior. So number one, I wear this gear because I'm really into martial arts. I you know, the martial arts places I go to, they make me read martial arts books that I have to purchase. They make me buy their T-shirts, their underwear, their socks, their fucking shorts, their hats. So I'm like, bro, if I didn't pay money for it, I'm going to wear it, man. Number two, bro, I, rep I rock what I represent. So you see a lot of cats, man. I'm going I'm to talk to you guys in L.A., but, like, a lot of cats wear the Warriors gear. Like, they wear the, uh, you know, the Golden State Warriors gear, and they're representing the fucking, what's the, the L.A. Lakers Nothing, nothing against that, guys. I'm just sharing with you. I'm not representing somebody else's shit. Like, this is me. I, I have black belts from these organizations, bro. This is what I do. And here's number three. And this is why most guys love me in the real world, not on YouTube. Bro, I'm congruent. Like, let me, let me share something with you guys. There's different types of fighting, right? There's the Queenberry rules where, like, you know, you get in the, you get in the ring, bro, and you put on the gloves and... And they got, you know, three three-minute rounds, and they ding the bell. Ding, ding, ding. No hitting below the belt. You know what I'm saying? If a dude's down, it's a 10 count to get up. That's the Queensbury's rule. Then you got street fighting, which is like, hey, man, anything goes. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's just dirty fighting. No ring, no bells, no ringing, no none of that. Then you got competitive, like, martial arts on the level of, like, the Olympic-type level where you're competing internationally, bro, right? Then you got prison fighting, which you fight in prison, which is like, it's a variation of street fighting, but it's like dirty fighting, right? And then you got life or death survival combat fighting, bro. Where <laughs> it's like you ran out of bullets, you done ran, you done lost your knife, uh, you know what I mean? And you're trying to get it back home to Becky so you can make some little dudes, right? And you can enjoy the American dream. So it's like the saving private Ryan shit when they was the German dude was fighting the American dude and it just came down to the bayonet and he's slaughtered him so what makes me interesting is because guys i unfortunately i grew up in the jungles of puerto rico so i've seen some cannibalistic life or death shit bro as a kid then i went to the concrete jungles of new york in the hoods it's a lot of street fighting bro because i was light-skinned dude with green eyes my hair what i had it is sandy blonde <laughs> sandy blonde with red in it bro this is weird the girls loved it played a lot of sports when you play sports there's a lot of fights bro did a lot of competitive martial arts dude unfortunately went to the belly of the beast as a mixed dude with no affiliations with anybody and it's just a lot going on so i got to really i was tested i'm tested on the battlefronts of all different battles bro it's not some Kata Gi shit. It's the real shit. Like, I do this. I'm not proud of it. When I was younger, I used to like to fight. Now I'd like to make love and make money. But I'm just saying, when a man looks at me, bro, they know. Like, I do this. So I wear this because I remember, guys, like, I got 10 different black belts, man, from karate to taekwondo to judo to Japanese jiu-jitsu. Um, wait, wait, wait. Um Ishinru karate, man, and I got it in Kempo karate, then I got it in Taekwondo, and then I got it in um, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, which is, which is this one right here, then I got it in Sipakan Jiu-Jitsu, I got it in Aikido, and then I have it in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, 
And then I have it in, uh, did I say, did I say judo? Um, I got a commando Krav Maga. And then I got uh, Eskrima. And then I got uh, one more. I just forget what it is. I got so many. I could look up the paperwork. But the point I'm making, every time I got my black belt route and I got a t-shirt, I used to walk through the mall with my t-shirt on and my black belt. And just so you guys know, I'm on a, I'm on a mission to do a body transformation because the foreign country that I'm going to is um, it's an island. And, and, the, and the natives just run around with no shirts on and stuff and just their little grass skirts and shit. So you got to represent a barbaric look. So you got to be ripped. So I'm going from my, I'm going, to, I'm planning to go from, uh, I'm at currently at 245. I was 250. I'm going to go down to 195. And I got, I got my tattoos say barbarian warrior and savage and all kind of shit. So I remember I used to go to Santa Cruz and, and then, and then the guys, some wimpy guys would be like, Hey man, um, I got a question for you. Are you afraid that uh, when guys see you with these martial arts t-shirts on and all your skulls and then they see your tattoos that say Savage Barbarian Warrior, what if a guy challenges you? And I tell him like this. I ain't looking for no smoke. And I don't want no smoke. But if somebody brings me some smoke, I got the fire. So if a dude wants to challenge me, that's on him because I'm going to feel free to do what I want to do. I'm express freedom of expression. So I just share this with you. So anyway, guys, I get on the set. The seven, sixes, and fives are just like, you can tell when a woman likes you. That's why I want to talk to you about your archetype. Women that like savage, barbarian warriors, which most women do, they do. Their eyes light up. That's how you can tell. So, But the hot girls, don't get me wrong, they're with the pretty savages. And that's why I wanted to tell you about this video. So then anyway, the pretty boys, the two pretty boys are circle by all the women the handsome masculine dudes are in circle by all the women the, i'm talking about the tens because tens are like hypergamous this is what this video is about they're hypergamous they want the top 10 percent of the top 10 percent right so the tens were all with the pretty let's call them the pretty savage and the, the two pretty savages and then the nines and the eights were all the, no the, the tens and the nines were with the pretty savages and then the eights and the sevens were all with um let's call them the masculine handsome dudes but then all the sixes and the fives, bro, they were like feeling your boy. So I walk in there. I ain't. Tr I'm there to get the money, bro. I'm not. I don't. I don't mix business with pleasure. I'll tell you in another video because uh, I don't want this one to go too long. So anyway, I go over there. They just do. They're just beaming like, "Hi, how you doing?" This and that. Oh, I've seen your show, Vegas Views. All this just all on me, bro. So I'm just like, man, I'm going to wardrobe. So girl, I've done three other movies with. She's making me up. Got me my wardrobe that I put on. There's pictures here on Patreon. And doing, doing my makeup, I've taken pictures of that too. And so then, bro, let me tell you what happens, bro. So they're shooting their scenes, and every scene is building up to the climax. Like, you got to remember, they've been shooting for a week. This is the final day, and it's building up to the climax, and these guys shoot the scenes in order. So they're shooting these scenes, and I see them, bro. The tall, pretty, savage white boys is beating the fuck out of these other Let's just call them masculine white. No, I'm talking about, dude, I've been trained in stunt. Um, st I've been trained in movie stunts and movie martial arts fighting. So even though it looks realistic, it's not. You have to care about your partner, and you got to make it look real, as real as you can, without hurting somebody. These dudes don't know what they're doing. Like, a couple of white dudes got fucked up for real. Talk about, I can't shoot another scene. Like, arms all bruised up. Shoulders fucked up, back fucked. They was, bro, they was when they was shooting the scene, they was fighting. I was like, what the fuck, bro? They was getting slammed in this shit, like for real, for real. No pass, nothing. So I'm like, bro, I'm I'm savage, bro. Let's do it. Fuck it. So anyway, <laughs> as they come out from each scene, and each white boy is, is called attrition. They're like, oh man, I can't go on. My arms fucked up. Oh man, my shoulders fucked up. My back's fucked. Up. I'm sitting there getting ready. So then the producer keeps coming out. The director's like, get ready, OG, because your scene's coming. You're going to be fighting the two stars of the show, man. And I want you to put a show on. Like, come out with the savageness, right? So now the hot girls, because they follow the pretty savages, they follow them. So then the, the pretty savages, bro, this is how Hollywood works as a hierarchy. It's the, it's the writers, the producers, the directors, 
and then it's the, the, the star of the movie, and then it's the co-star, it's like that. So the two stars of the movie keep seeing the producer talking to me, the director, yo, gee, that's not. So then the, the tall, pretty, savage white boy comes to me like, hey, man, uh, yo, G Silverback, I was like, yeah, man, because I'm Brian, man. We friends on Facebook in the actors group. I seen you. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to meet you in person. I'm the star of the show. Just you know, I said, well, I figured that out. And then all the hot girls are following him. You know what I mean? And he's like, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. And then so then the the other pretty white dude, the pretty savage, goes, hey man, it's an honor to meet you, man. I've been watching your show. So then the hot girls, their antennas go up like, oh, who's this guy? You know? Yeah, I've been watching your show. And I, I saw you on there, and you and the lovely Nicole and everything. And, then, if, dude, if, if if they let us take pictures, it would be awesome to take a picture. So then the main white dude, pretty boy, goes, yeah, i like to take a picture too. Now, all of a sudden, the pretty savages realize I'm a savage, you know, because, I mean, like, bro, sometimes you can be friends with a person on Facebook or IG or however it works, I don't know, TikTok, whatever, and you can see pictures of them. But when you see a person in person, you may not be able to correlate the two together. I don't know if that makes sense because I'm a lot bigger. I'm sharing this with you guys over here at Pimpology. I'm a lot bigger in person than people imagine. I'm pretty big, bro. Like a lot of people meet me, they think I either be used to be a, a former professional bodybuilder, a professional f uh, football player, or a professional wrestler. <coughs> I'm pretty big, man. So anyway, the pretty savage, man, now all of a sudden he's tight with me. He's like, hey, man. Because before he was just ignoring me, like, who's this fucking, they, I look like a big black dude, like, who's this fucking bitch? I'm a pretty savage white boy, like, I can fight, I'm a savage, I know martial arts, but they don't know, he didn't know who I was. So now the producer's like, yeah, I was just so back, you're going to fight, Brian. And then Brian's like, yeah, man, I've been following your stuff, man, and um, it's a pleasure to meet you in person. So we're going to do the fight scenes, and we got to make it look real, but let's not, you know, hurt each other. Because I said, man, check it out, man, if you've been following my stuff, I do this for real, bro, and it's safety first. So I got you, man. You know, whatever force you bring, I'm a match. And he's like, yeah, let's do the eye contact thing. So then we did a couple of choreographed fights. But here's what I'm going I'm to wrap this video up for you guys. Hope you enjoyed the story. But this is what happens, dude. Very beautiful women. Back to the sexual market value, bro. It's looks, money, status. Let me break it down to you, man. When women go to their ovulatory cycles, bro. And they get ready to they they get ready to um what's it called when they're ovulating where they can have a baby where their eggs are fertile, it's just human nature, bro. There's this book called The Red Queen, bro. It's a book called Evolutionary Psychology, bro. Over here at Patreon, when I recommend these books, this is Pimpology. Pimpology starts with your mind. Your mind's your biggest muscle. Check it out. So you read these books because you're going to be a warrior scholar. A philosopher, a barbarian, a savage king, right? You got to be smart. It's just not about martial arts. So check it out. When a woman is ovulating, bro, they cannot help it. That's what you guys got to understand here. They're attracted to flashy, pretty things. That's why looks, that's why it says in the sexual market value, looks, money, status. It depends on a woman's ovulatory cycle. When she's ovulating, she's going for looks. The tall, handsome, pretty dude, man. And so I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to you. Sometime, you know, so just let's get let's just get this straight. A dude can be very pretty in his face like Prince, let's just say. But Prince is short for guys if you don't know, Prince is like 4 foot something. But he's so beautiful. Prince is a beautiful man. He's beautiful. Brad Pitt is a very beautiful man, well, at least when he was younger. He's very beautiful. So there's a beautiful men that women are just drawn to beautiful things. Don't you guys notice that women always wear flashy clothes, they like beautiful cars. Nice things. They like beauty of life, bro. So they're, they're attracted to beauty. So it's beauty, pretty. And then, you know, sometimes your structure. So you can be a tall dude. And if you're somewhat handsome, that works, kids. You got the structure. You got the height. That's why they like guys over six foot. But just imagine if you're tall and handsome. Just, just follow me. You're just tall and handsome. You could be like, um, like a basketball player. But let's put muscles into it. So you, you, get, you get to the point where you got some muscles and you're tall, and you're halfway decent looking. So all that falls under looks. Women, when they're ovulating, they go into looks. Now then, once a woman has ovulated, like she's carrying a baby, right? She's carrying a baby. Just follow me, bro. I'm trying to walk you through this, bro. I do this fucking shit, bro. Once she's got the baby secured, like now she is pregnant. She's impregnated by the seed of the tall, handsome 
pretty boy. Now this is where money comes in, and I'm not. I'm just sharing with you. These are generalizations. A lot of tall, handsome, pretty dudes don't have a lot of money because they get through life. They got what's called pretty privilege, bro. They just walk around. They get everything. It's like a pretty girl. Pretty men get just treated just like pretty women, bro. Pretty women just fall at their feet. Listen to me. Pretty women fall for pretty for pretty men. Beautiful women fall for pretty men. But now in our society, they want a pretty dude that can take care of himself. So just follow me. So now the woman's pregnant. Most pretty men don't stick around. I just want to hurry up and get to the point of this. So now they're looking for money. That's where, like, the billionaires come in, like Jeff Bezos and... and uh, the guy I used to work for, uh, Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. If you look at these guys, bro, they're little geeky dudes, but they got money. You know, Warren Buffett. These, t This is money. That's why they call it alpha fucks, beta bucks. When a woman is ovulating, I'm going to wrap this up for you so you understand all these terms. When a woman is ovulating, she's attracted to pretty things. Her emotions control her just like your emotions control her. That's why they tell you never fight angry. You got to be calm and think. You always stay. That's why I, I teach you guys flow-based martial arts. Because when I fight, I don't use power. I use my power on naked women when I submit them and I arm bar them and choke them and, and full Nelson them, bro, to make them squirt. When I'm fighting a grown man, dude, I use logic and cunning and strategy. And I, you got to keep your head cool because I fight a lot of guys who are bigger and stronger than me and more savage and more masculine than me. But I'm a thinking fighter. So follow me. That's why it's called alpha fucks beta bucks now that she's pregnant and the alpha left her she's going for the beta male provider so that's the money but here's the status listen to me guys once the woman <coughs> has secured the beta and he's now support he's now raising the alpha's kid because the alpha's off just alpha on other women the woman is looking for a man who has status Status doesn't necessarily mean money. Status just means you're known socially, like social media. You're just known. Now, sometimes dudes with status have money, but I'm just saying status trumps money. Follow me. When Jeff Bezos, who's a billionaire, dude, he's one of the richest men in the world, he went to a, um, he went to a party where Leonardo DiCaprio was. DiCaprio, sorry. Leonardo DiCaprio is worth a couple hundred million. Jeff Bezos is worth billions, bro. His wife was ready to suck Leonardo DiCaprio's dick because he's got more social status. So if you like this type of content, man, stay tuned over here on the Patreon, man, at the pimping level. And the, you guys at the pimpingology level here, man, you can actually email me suggestions of videos you want me to make and subjects you want me to cover because over here I'm trying to inculcate you with 61 years of knowledge from me being a bouncer, bro. Bouncers get laid. A bodyguard. Bodyguard gets laid, bro. A stripper. If you don't know, strippers get laid. A masseuse. Masseuse gets laid. A personal trainer. And I was a bar back. A bar back is like the replacement of the bartender when the bartender goes to the bathroom or he brings the alcohol from the cellar up to the bar. He cleans the bar. He puts the ice there. He prepares everything for the bartender. So you got to understand. So sometimes women love bartenders get laid, bro. I'm just sharing this with you. Being an IT executive, bro. Being a competitive martial artist and a champion bodybuilder, bro, I'm just telling you, bro. I know women, and I'm trying to share this with you guys. So if you like this type of stuff, email me at ogsilverback971 at gmail.com. Also, if here at Patreon, you can email me. And then uh, just tell me some topics you want me to cover or even on our coaching calls. We can talk about it. So until next time, OG Silverback out.